All right, guys, today what we're going to talk about is ocean waves and tides, which is the last set of notes for this school year. It's very exciting. So a wave is a rhythmic movement that carries energy through matter or space. So for instance, you can have lots of different types of waves. You can have sound waves, light waves, uh, ocean waves, are all different types of energy that is moving through some sort of matter or space uh, in a rhythmic pattern. So in, in oceans, the waves move through seawater. Here's an example of a wave, which most of you guys have seen in some parts. And waves are caused by the mechanical energy that's transferred from three things. It can either be transferred from wind, earthquakes, or the gravitational force of the moon and the sun. And there are five parts to a wave. The crest is the highest point of the wave. The trough is the lowest point of the wave. The wave height is the vertical distance between the crest and the trough. The wave length is the horizontal distance between two crests or two troughs. And the period is the time between successive crests or troughs. So here's a diagram of the different parts of a wave. You see the wave height here from the crest of the trough. You have to see the wave length. And then you have the crest as the top part and the trough is the bottom. So when a wave passes through the ocean, an individual water molecules move up and down, but they don't move forward or backward. This changes as the wave approaches shore. So as a wave energy approaches shore, the molecules that are down at the bottom of uh, the wave start to slow down because of friction against the sand. So as those mo molecules slow down, the top is, doesn't have as much friction, so it's still moving at a faster rate. As the bottom begins to drag behind, the top begins to fold forward until eventually it breaks onto shore. This is very similar to how what happens when you trip over something. When you trip, the bottom part of your body, your feet, often get caught on something. You're, they stop or slow down. Your top part of your body is still moving at the speed you were going originally, and your whole forward motion goes forward, and you fall, and you trip. So the same thing happens with the wave. So when we have, when wind blows across a body of water, the friction causes the water to move along with the wind. Swell around a crest form from long, low waves that have long, lost contact with wind. So here's some examples of swells. They're very large waves out in open ocean. So here's one that's very high up off the bow of this ship. Here's another one. This is probably during a storm where you can have swells of 20, 30, 40 feet, usually uh, associated with very major storms. So there's three factors that determine the energy of a wave. The first one is time, which is how long has the air or wind been in contact with the water? The velocity is the speed of the wind in a certain direction. Is it a very gentle wind speed or is it a hurricane uh, force winds? And then the last one is fetch, which is the amount of ocean surface blowing across the um, area. So for instance, the Pacific Ocean is much larger than the Atlantic, so therefore the fetch of the Pacific is much bigger than that of the Atlantic. So when a wave breaks against the shore, the crest outruns the trough and the crest collapses. This is called a breaker. Gravity then pulls that wave down back onto shore. In this case, water does move forward and backward, which you've probably felt when you're at the beach. You can feel the water coming in, and then pulling out. Areas where there is lots of waves breaking is a high energy environment. Areas where there are very few breakers are low energy environments. The next thing we're going to talk about is tides. Tides is the rise and fall of sea level uh, on the planet. It's caused by the gravitational pull of the moon on Earth, and it's based upon the lunar day, which is 24 hours and 50 minutes. And if you recall, the, lunar, the Earth day is 24 hours, so therefore, the lunar day is actually 50 minutes more. This is why we don't get the tide at the same time every day. It's actually off by 50 minutes. So one day, it'll be at 12 noon. The next day, it'll be at 12.50, uh, and so on and so forth. And it's caused by a giant wave. So there's one low tide and one high tide cycle about every 12 hours and 25 minutes. The tidal range is the difference in ocean level between high tide and low tide. I'm sure all of you have been at the beach and have seen high tide and low tide. What you're looking at is what is the difference between them to calculate your tidal range. So here if we look at tidal range, we have the high tide at 30 feet and the low tide at 20 feet. Well, if you're calculating the difference, you're subtracting, 
So 30 minus 20 means your tidal range is 10 feet. On this one, you have 20 feet is high tide mark, low tide is at 12 feet, so the answer to that tidal range would be 8 feet. And then the last one, the high tide is at 50 feet, low tide is at 20, making the tidal range 30 feet. So what causes the two bulges on, uh, on Earth? So the moon causes one on right underneath it, and then the other one is on the direct opposite side has to do with law of physics that we're not going to talk about here, but just know that wherever the, during the uh, lunar day, as it's going around the Earth, I take that back, excuse me, as it's rotating once on its axis, uh, it ends up giving one high tide. The Earth is spinning on its axis, which is moving the water. If you go around the Earth, that would be the lunar month. Uh, so as the moon, as the Earth rotates once on its axis, that high tide here, will move as, uh, the earth will move. The bulge will stay the same, but the earth will move below it, which is why we actually, it's actually a giant wave. The planet moves under the bulge of water where there's oceans, you end up with a, the high tide and low tide. Where there's no ocean, there's no effect. So as the earth spins, the bulge follows the moon. So now we have two different seasonal types or monthly types of tides. We have one that's known as a spring tide, and it doesn't happen in the spring. It actually happens all year round. And a spring tide happens when the sun, earth, and moon are all in a line. So we'll have, here's the sun, here's the moon, and here's the earth. During a spring tide, the high tides are higher and the low tides are lower than normal. So this typically happens during a new moon phase of the moon. So here's the sun, here's the moon. The shaded part of the moon is facing earth. So because we have the gravitational pull, everything's pulling in one direction, you end up having a higher high tide because you have the gravitational pull of the sun and the gravitational pull of the moon all working together. It gives you a higher high tide and a lower low tide than normal. The other type of uh, tide you have is a neap tide. Neap tides happen when you have the sun, earth, and moon forming a right angle. So you have the gravitational pull of the sun you also have the gravitational pull of the moon. During a neap tide, the high tides are lower than lower and the low tides are higher than normal. This happens during a first quarter or a third quarter moon. So when the moon looks like it's half lit up, you end up in a neap tide. That's because the sun is actually making a small bulge of water as, as well as the moon making that larger bulge of water, giving you higher low tides, but lower high tides. So there are three different classifications of tides. I'm not too worried that you guys remember the three types, but I do want you to know that we are the semi-diurnal tide. That's when we have two equal high tides and low tides per day. There's also a diurnal tide, which is one high tide and one low tide per day. And then you have mixed tides, which are two high tide and two low tides of unequal heights per day. The only one that I want you to know is this semi-diurnal. We're in a semi-diurnal tide on the east coast. All right, so tomorrow when you come into class, we're going to be looking at ocean waves and calculating tidal ranges. Okay? So now you guys are going to finish up your whisk. Don't forget to come up with a question that you still have, and I'll talk to you next class. Have a great day, guys.